Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the KBCE. Yeah. Okay. I am your host, Kaiju X, and with me today I have GVR, Alex, Nagoda, and Ditto. And today we will be reading Shell Shock vs. Uranium Unicorn by Ultimate Ditto. <clears throat> Two Titans stood in the center of Salt Lake City. Hundreds of meters down, the streets across from each other, the people of Salt Lake had never seen anything like it. A large, turtle-like monster was standing on one end of the street, with a large streetlight sticking out of the top of its shell. On the other side, a bulky blue unicorn was popping its knuckles, its, glowing a ho glowing in its horn glowing a bright yellow in the <laughs> presence of the evening sky. It was also wearing a spacesuit of sorts. Most of the people that had evacuated, but the few that stayed made sure to capture the strange phenomenon as many in as many ways as possible. Okay. Shell shock rushed toward toward the blue unicorn. I'm going right into it. All right, ready to smash the horse into oblivion. The uranium unicorn begins to charge. Gosh darn it, Kaiju X, at the overgrown turtle as the two close the gap. Shell shock threw a right hook, but uranium unicorn ducked under and maneuvers or behind shell shock. Gosh darn it, wrapping his arms around the <laughs> turtle shell and successfully performs a German suplex, even if the streetlight did did make the execution a bit awkward. Groaning, shell shock got up and stares down the unicorn, grunting. The turtle pulls his right arm to his shell, then pulls out now with a large wooden bat in hand. Perplexed by how a turtle got the bat, Uranium Unicorn shakes his head and focuses the fight once again. Shellshock kicks the roof off a small building, causing debris to cloud his opponent's vision. With his foe distracted, Shellshock moved in for the attack, swinging with all of his might. The turtle is able to shake the strike Uranium Unicorn on the side of his cranium, flying into a rubble of uh, uh, a building. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the structure collapsed and buries the unicorn in rubble. Ha 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 ha. Now that's what I call a home run, the turtle monster pronounced as he danced around. Uranium unicorn pulled himself out of the wreckage and lets out a cry that sounded like a deep neigh. Shellshock stops his victory dance and turned around, only to be greeted by a huge big blue fist. <laughs> really back in pain, the giant terrapin clutches his beak as he glares at the unicorn. Pass. Watch it, pony boy, I need that to eat, Shellshock barked. The uranium unicorn just snorted as he cracked a grin, grabbing Shellshock's bat. The two began to gravel for the weapon. Yanking it out of Shellshock's grip, uranium starts to beat the shelled foe like a pinata. Each strike is rewarded with a loud yelp from the terrapin. Hey, knock it off, there isn't any candy in me. Ow! Shellshock, realizing now would be a good time to break out his secret weapon, backs himself up and waits for the unicorn to strike. Did, you, did that really need an exclamation point? No. No. Yes. <laughs> the uranium unicorn charges towards Shellshock, wanting to shove the bat down the turtle's ass. <laughs> oh. Okay, throat. I might have editorialized a bit. He was Shell throating. <laughs> Shellshock, not even remotely phased, gets into a stance and waits for the perfect opportunity. Finally in range, the lone unicorn swings the bat with all his might. Hmm, I wonder why you would say lone unicorn. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Freeze! The uranium unicorn stops dead in his tracks as he is hit by a flash of red light. Unable to move, the space invader was at the turtle's mercy now. Ha 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 ha! How about that, huh? You're like my stab ray? Shellshock boasted as he poked his opponent's face. Uranium unicorn could only stare in anger as he watched Shellshock back up a few meters, grinning at him. Pass. So, I did not get the long paragraphs. Anyways, oh. Shellshock prepares himself. You don't seem to know just how scary I can be. Don't worry, I'll fix that. Terrapin retracted his head into his shell, with a large cannon taking its place. A cacophonous explosion burst out of the cannon. It makes a direct hit on Uranium Unicorn at full power. Being forcibly broken out of the stop right, Uranium Unicorn is sent hurtling past smaller buildings before slamming into a skyscraper, easily bringing it down. Shellshock retracts the cannon and brings out his normal head, looking on at his fallen foe. Wait, yeah, look, wait, opponent, I mean, who laid there helplessly above his rubble mound. 
rolling in both arms into a shell, shell shock brings them out again, for this time with brass knuckles on both claws. Before shell, so shell, shell shock could finish the final blow, distant loud footsteps caught his attention. Turning around to face the, for the source of the footsteps, shell shock's eye eyes widened as he saw two more uranium unicorns walk down the nearby mountain. Both snorting and grunting as they made their way into the city, the third one looks towards his fallen comrade, and correctly suspects the bizarre terrapin to be the culprit. The second one takes notice too and decides to eliminate the colonial threat. Realizing the situation he was in, Shell Shock activates his streetlight and fires a green ray at the unicorn. The second one managed to dodge it, but the third one was not so fortunate. The green light washed over the, the third uranium unicorn causing him to begin jogging in place. Shell Shock watched in joy as his opponent uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry, I lost my place for a bit. Shell Shock watched in joy as his opponent was dumbfounded by his newfound urge to run. The second uranium unicorn commands his partner to stop running, unaware of the beams of The third unicorn runs towards Shell Shock. Surging with a drone in to trample him underfoot. The smaller shell shock uses his brass knuckles and uppercuts the unicorn in the jaw, instantly flooring the titan, kicking up the breeze and shaking build the buildings around him. Still under the effects of the gold beam, the unicorn was still running on the ground. Looking towards the second, shell shock proudly states, You want some? Do you want some of this? I get out of here so I can turn you into glow. Accepting the challenge, the uranium unicorn cracks his knuckles and prepares to brawl. Shellshock, happy with the answer, puts up his brass knuckles and stands in an idle battle position. The unicorn runs up towards the colonial threat and brings both of his down. However, a red flash catches him guard. Unable to move and open to attack, Shellshock propels himself with a leap, plunging an uppercut into the unicorn's shin and sending him careening. Shellshock! The turtle monster struck the helpless space horse in the gut repeatedly, sparks flying with each hit. Finally breaking him out of the stop ray, the second unicorn falls. Shellshock remarked. I couldn't catch a Pass. single word you said there. Of, uh, yeah, that what? felt good. I didn't catch that. Yeah, word. that felt good. There you go. How's that? Fair enough. Yeah. Pass. Oh, uh. After ditto. ditto ditto does his four, uh, I think there is, I think about three to four paragraphs I had unaccounted for, so you guys could switch off. I'll still take the last three or four. Okay. So I still oh yeah, you four? get the last three or four, which are super tiny. <laughs> I know. Okay. That's how I looking, win. <laughs> looking over his fallen opponents, once again Shellshock danced in victory, smashing smaller buildings underfoot and sending shockwaves throughout the city. Oh yeah, baby, Gamma ain't got nothing on this turtle monster. He boasted <laughs> gleefully. The third one <laughs> tries to get up with some result. With some result, only to stumble on some small buildings. Rolling along the streets and buildings, the unicorn trips the oblivious turtle and brings him crashing to the ground. Getting back to up to his feet, the terrapin looks for the offender and sees his opponent rolling around like a child. Not amused in the slightest, the turtle beast retracts both arms and brings him out once again, this time with two more baseball bats. Running to his opponent, he beats him like a drum with his bat, sparks flying as his opponent groaned in pain. Not too far away, the first uranium unicorn stirs from in consciousness and looks around for Shellshock surprised to see that his comrades are here. He was also shocked to see them all being beaten by the same turtle. Getting off his mound, he gallops at full speed towards the unsuspecting turtle. When he got in range, he turned around and kicks the turtle, Shell, with a powerful donkey kick. The bewildered Shell Shock is sent soaring through the air like a bird. Like bird. Waving his arms wildly, he crashes headfirst into Salt Lake City's one Utah center. Which surprisingly didn't crumble into dust. How convenient. Helping up his teammate who was free of the ray's effects, the second collapsed due to exhaustion. Aerobatics was not his strong suit. The second unicorn gets up and groups with his teammates, the three conjuring plans on how to deal with this turtle menace. Shellshock pulls himself out of the crater and turns to be greeted by three uranium unicorns, outnumbered and surrounded. The terrapin was not phased. 
The turtle cracked a toothy grin. Am I supposed to be scared? I fought all ladies that hit harder than you lot. Shellshock <laughs> snickered at his opponents. And I think that's a pass? Yeah, that'll, that's a pass. I'll, I'll take it over. The first unicorn picks up a small building and chucks that shell shock, smashing against his face. The shell foe flinches at the sudden attack. Before he could even retaliate, he was hit hard on the side of his cranium by, a thir by the third unicorn. Completely floored by the attack, the Shalonian fired his the Shalonian feed fire fires his go beam and hits the second unicorn, causing him to jog without stopping. The other two unicorns begin to claw with the turtle. However, they are easily pushed back by the terrapin, rising to his feet. Shellshock whips out a pirate hook from within his shell and charges the uranium unicorns. The two space evaders dodge out of harm's way, but Shellshock manages to strike one unicorn with his hook, sparks flying with each blow. The unicorn grunts in pain as he struggles to block the hook. The third unicorn comes from behind, wraps his arms around Shellshock, and begins to shake the terrapin violently. Shellshock attempts to break free, break free the bear hug, break the bear hug but to no avail. Any attempt at hurting his captor only caused the grip to tighten. The second uranium unicorn makes his way to the three fighting and continues his sprint towards them. Meanwhile, the uranium unicorn now has Shellshock still standing in a power uh, in a power half Nelson, while his teammate punches the turtle in the gut repeatedly. The first unicorn hears his friend coming and moves as the second unicorn runs headfirst into the turtle, his jagged horn puncturing Shellshock's underbelly. The turtle screams in pain as he feels the superheated horn cauterize the wound. Breaking out of the go beam, the unicorns throw the turtle aside. Snorting, the equine converse amongst each other, gloating over their new victory. However, while they were distracted, a large explosion strikes the trio, sending two rolling to the ground and one flying back into the air like a rocket. Shellshock rises, from his, rises to his feet, clutching his left ribs and, ribs and grunting in pain. The turtle looks for his opponents and sees two of them on the ground. His wondering of the third one is short-lived as he hears squealing coming from above. Looking up, he sees the third one crash into an assortment of buildings, kicking up dust and debris from the impact. Groggily, the two remaining unicorns get up and stare down to Turtle, wanting to rid of this monster. The two decide to use their signature technique, piggy piggybacking on his comrade, until two, the two remaining unicorn, uranium unicorns stood like a totem pole, almost doubling in height. Pulling a bat out of a shell, Shellshock readies himself and runs towards the uranium totem, whacking the ribs of the lower unicorn, causing the two to wobble. The top unicorn grabs the streetlight and tries to break it in two, but Shellshock would not allow that to happen. A red flash illuminates the top unicorn as he is rendered immobile. However, the unicorn was still grap gripping the light pole and was unable to let go. Shellshock swipes the bottom horse's snout and forces the equine to back off. With the other unicorn still gripped to the streetlight, the weight of the immobilized uranium unicorn brings Shellshock down, face planting into the earth. Uh, the two crash to the ground. The larger uranium unicorn blocks Shellshock's vision, releasing him, releasing him with a stop ray. Shellshock pushes the bigger animal off and gets to his feet looking for his other opponent. He feels a tap on his shoulder. Turning around, Shellshock is greeted by a jagged horn and by a jagged horn impale him. <laughs> okay. No oh boy. Much to his horror, cutting him cutting into him and piercing his black heart. That's a little edgy <laughs> for this kind of character. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't strike me as an edge board. Nah, not nah, not really. no. <laughs> it's metaphorical. <laughs> this is a tone shift. Shellshock <laughs> stares into the unicorn's inverted eyes with hatred, knowing that this uranium unicorn was the first one he challenged. Now he was helpless, his body dissolving into golden particles. Pass. With the last ounce of his being, he manages to leave one last eerie message. That, that was a pretty good fight, but there's still <laughs> more guys out there waiting to drag me. They'll find you and make you never try to invade Earth. Remember that boy, boy? The earth will always belong to the dark beans. Beans. 
Uranium, uranium unicorn was grunted as he shifted Shellshock's dying body into the air, gold dust floating into the atmosphere. What was left of Shellshock finally disintegrates and disappears into the night. With his foe gone, the remaining uranium unicorn sits among the ruins of Salt Lake City and relaxes, patiently waiting for his comrades to wake up. Earth would soon belong to their master, Winter Uranium Unicorn. So, where's the sequel to this, Dodo? Where is it? Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it connected to the previous match <laughs> no previous match was connected to every universe ever so yes <laughs> anyway you know the flaws here are still pretty much the same for the last one once again congratulations on KDBC e head honchos for screwing that one up but freaking uh I, I, I'd argue this one is at least better. I didn't notice as yeah. much errors in the I, story. I, I noticed... think the story at least uh felt more compact and Yes. Was was more simple. Yes, that's what I was about that was gonna be my genuine positive. The f the story is not this big epic calamity that serves as the just merely a backdrop to a simple fight. It is just simply a fight of two antagonists. And, you know, you kind of learn at the end there that the Uranium Unicorns aren't quite the good guys either. They're, like, you know, they're their own bad guys, and two bad guys cross, cross, uh, cross paths. Uh, but, Friggy, uh... Yeah, no, so I think in this sense, the, the flaws are still there. But I don't think they're as disproportionate because the story is more compact and actually more interesting. Uh, I like... The, like, they're goofy characters, but I ultimately do think that goofy... The nature of the two kind of goofy characters does help here with these characters. I think it matches the tone a lot... Up to the end, it matches the tone a lot more. It feels in line with both characters that work off really well. Uh, so, yeah, this one, I think, like, tells the story a lot better. Its only real issue is just tensing and uh, grammar that's 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 really about it mostly tensing uh, yeah I do think this is something I definitely see more or less ditto doing because it is goofy yeah in, in a good way yeah, yeah exactly it's goofy in a good way so I unironically like this a lot better compared to your previous one I remember really enjoying it the first time I gave it a look around too so it's like yeah no this this one's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's a good match, even though, again, I d don't really know either of the combatants. I think Ditto did a great job. Yes, agree, agree. I think you get a good, really good sense of who they are without, well, with what I had imagined, like, you know, without really derailing. It's hard to say because I don't know these two characters personally, but, you know, I think as, if you're a newbie looking in it, it's like, I think it's like, you know, seems accurate, you know? So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see, I'll go down, uh, GVR, what'd you think of, uh, number 16? Pretty good. Just short, simple fight. Again, it is clearly, like, one of Ditto's older matches, but this one aged much better than the previous one. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot to say, just, it was a fun little fight. Alright. Uh, Alex, did you have any more to add on to, uh, like, what you're saying? Um, um, I think other than, uh, it, then it gave me a couple chuckles. Um, uh, no, I think this is a good match, and I think this is something I could... This is definitely something that belongs to Ditto because of the silliness to it and the humor. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good match. Oh yeah, baby. Gamera ain't got ain't got nothing on this turtle monster. <laughs> According to Titano Goji in the forum in the thread for this one, that is like in character this match did nail Shellshock's character well. Okay. Sweet. And I assume that Titano knows a lot about Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah Titano like he is very wrote. he's pretty much uh uh Power Rangers dude, so yeah, no. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, Nagoto, what do you think of uh, number 16? The dialogue. Also really f interesting. Mm -hmm. 
I don't really have much to say on this one. It's just really like short, not really short, but uh, a lot of fun dialogue at least. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, ditto, like, how do you feel about this one, like, you know, compared to the last one when you wrote it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold, hold on a sec, guys, hold on, hold on. Uh, what? yeah, give me a moment. I'll have to cut this out in post. On my rosary walk, looks like an angel. Wait, what? Oh, you see it? damn. Yeah, I see it. See it. He's gonna go fix his bathroom again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I see it, I see it. <laughs> I'm recording. Okay, go ahead. sorry. Yeah. Hey, so dude, what do you think of it? Oh, hold on, real quick. I gotta go tile the whole bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, no, my yeah. mom came in, so I'm gonna have to cut that bit out. All right. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's old ladies that hit harder than uranium unicorn. One just beat Beck Godzilla two in Super Chikuro yesterday. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh. All right, but yeah, Ditto. What do you feel about Shell Shock vs. Uranium Unicorn? How do you feel about it? What? Yada yada yada. The this one aged, uh, I'd say it aged better than the last one. Uh, a lot of the dialogue still holds up pretty well, which I'm pretty happy with. Uh, I yeah, the Gamera line is my favorite one, and the Shoryuken one. Uh, yeah, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Oh, that's awesome. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Like I said, I, I had no idea who Shellshock was, and I was reading... I just watched, like, a few clips and what it said on the wiki. But, uh, since, you know, Titano Goji is the expert, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Well, yeah. On portraying him. Uh, yeah, I... Looking back at this now, uh... I would definitely break up some of the paragraphs because they are really, like, thick. And then, yeah, the grammar and stuff for the tensing. Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. It's definitely, we weren't, you know, laughing it up back in the previous match. So that's a good thing. And, yeah, I'd say it's a pretty good and it's also pretty short which is yeah it's short enough at least oh. so you know solid stuff <laughs> also, also this match I didn't know take place in the Heisei universe because there was a lot of sparks <laughs> oh, yeah that's <laughs> right and of course the monster ends with dissolving into golden particles it's like a Heisei bomb well did, wasn't that oh, a power yeah. interest thing though like splod heavy sparks I honestly don't remember <laughs> Uh, uh, you, you didn't hear anything. Oh, honestly. Dang what? it. <laughs> Dang. I thought I was safe. <laughs> no, for safe. I think sparks are like a big Power Rangers thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. just like a Toku thing of just every hit throws out a hundred sparks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sparks replace blood, basically. Yeah, so overall I would say, uh... This match aged like a can of spam you bought two years ago. Then you find it in your pantry. And you're like, oh hey, so I got five months on this thing. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's good. An apt metaphor. <laughs> Very apt metaphor. That could be used from the last one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's about it for me. All right. Well, wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah, no, it's always super nice when it's not as bad. And I think because this one, again, just on a smaller scale, didn't take itself. Because the last one took it, tried to take itself seriously and failed. <laughs> it just crashed, burned, and died. Yeah. Uh, but this one, yeah. I think, just fit, gelled a lot better with your writing style, even uh, tensing aside. So. Uh, but yeah, anyway, this has been uh, KWCE number 16. We'll see you guys next time for KWCE number 17. Uh, save us. See save you later. Us. Pray for us. Kill us. No. Don't make us read match 17. <laughs> Do it. I'm just kidding. Ay, ay, ay.